Well, good morning and welcome to Money Control. This morning, the market's looking kind of flat, but more importantly, the market, as far as the market is concerned, the sky is no longer looking uh, clear and bright and blue. Over the past few we weeks, some kind of haziness has set in on worries from China economic recovery, on uh, inflation inching up in India, and a whole bunch of other global factors. To discuss all this, I have with me a very special guest, Andrew Holland from Avendus Capital. Andrew, thank you so much for spending the time to joining me to join me this morning. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. So, Andrew, first off, uh, the top worry um, over the past few days was the Chinese economic recovery. Now, from your perspective, what are you picking up in terms of sentiment? What kind of impact could it have? In terms of fundamentals, how could it alter the, you know, uh, the commodity space? And in terms of global economic growth, what kind of repercussions do you think this will have? Yeah, no, so I think uh, you're correct. I think China's come back onto the radar, um, you know, very quickly uh, from a global perspective in terms of what that could mean for global growth. Um, and I think we've all been anticipating some kind of stimulus um, you know, from the, the Chinese authorities. We've seen it in little patches, um, but, you know, there's not been that kind of, um, you know, kind of bazooka type of uh, reform or, or injection into the economy, which the market's been expecting. So we had a, another rate re reduction today of, of 10 basis points, but it's at the margin. It's not really, um, you know, firing up uh, expectations that the economy can recover very quickly. So we'll have to wait and see what they do. Obviously, if they do something more significant, um, two factors will play there. One is I think the markets would rejoice a little bit that um, you know they're doing make, taking some action to help stabilize the global economy. Um, but two, it probably pushing the, to my mind in the short term, uh, commodity prices higher on the back of it. it's going to be a domestic um, package of incentives you know, to get the economy going, particularly in the, the, the kind of real estate market, which is uh, which is causing a lot of problems. Um, so that's what we're all waiting for. We're not getting that. Um, and what that means is that, um, uh, you know, India uh, is obviously kind of becoming the best love market in Asia um, uh, because of the, the woes in China. I know I was speaking to a, a number of people over the past week and, you know, when they visit, uh, investors uh, in, in Asia and elsewhere, um, you know, whilst before they would say, oh, China's cheap in terms of its valuations, that conversation has disappeared. And it's really, you know, what tell me what to buy in India, even though valuations are high. So, um, so good news for India, until the Chinese do a, a stimulus, stimulus package, um, in terms of uh, the favorable uh, kind of sentiment. Sure. So, so uh, I'll just repeat this part again um, uh, for clarity. That in terms of sentiment, can this have an impact? Because this whole idea of you know China being weak, uh, India being strong, has been playing out for quite some time. Uh, of course, there are real gains for the real economy. Plus, there is also you know some amount of flows getting dis uh, you know directed from China to India. But what I'm asking is, what kind of sentimental impact could it have on markets? on global equity sentiment at all? So until we get a stimulus package, I think it will be a negative sentiment because obviously, you know, um, you know, China's a, a huge economy and, and uh, you have many, um, you know, countries which would be exporters into into China, such as say Japan, uh, you know, Korea, uh, within Asia. Um, so they, the, the, their economies would be impacted quite a lot. But I think, you know, the slowdown um, would be would have two impacts. One, obviously, it would take uh, the developed world you know closer to to that recession a lot quicker than say be the markets expecting. On on the on, on the second, which is a little bit more positive, um, obviously you know uh, deflation is is playing an impact there, which is good for the, the you know for for inflation coming down. So it kind of falls into um, our view that at some point, which we think will be towards the end of the year, the Fed will have to reduce rates because. Um, the, the, the global uh, economy, including the U.S., is 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 kind of quickly moving towards uh, recession, um, you know, and not helped now by obviously this big slowdown in China. Sure, that was the uh, question I was about to um, ask you next. You know, what do you think of the rate 
tra trajectory uh, in the US now because even few weeks ago, I think before July, the last uh, one and the minutes of the July meeting uh, came some days ago. Uh, for the first time, it seems like there is some kind of disagreement within the members of the Fed also in terms of, you know, um, uh, whether we should be tightening a little bit more or staying the course. Uh, what is your sense? Uh, where do we go from here? So, yeah, it was a, it was a, the, the minutes were kind of uh, had a little bit for everyone, right? The bulls and the bears. Uh, the bulls in that, uh, you know, there's some dissenters thinking that we should go more on hold. Uh, whereas against the, you know, kind of for the bears, there was those saying we, we still need to do more. I think we're going to watch uh, very closely what happens, um, you know, this week in uh, at Jackson Hole, where, you know, we had the Federal Reserve chairman uh, and, the, and the European uh, chairman, uh, European Central Bank ch uh, chairwoman, uh, both speaking. Um, so we, maybe we'll get some more clues into how hawkish or, or dovish they might be. My, sus my, my suspicion is that they remain on pat. Um, so our view is that you know um, we're seeing deflation uh, start sorry deflation starting to happen in the U.S. It's really only shelter which is keeping the uh, the, the inflation a little bit higher than we would hope, um, and um, we're starting to see even though jobs is holding up, the wage growth is starting to slow. And we do think that will accelerate uh, in the back end of the year, forcing the Fed to to move quicker than the markets um, you know now anticipating. So that's the good news that we see. Um, going forward. Uh, the bad news is that uh, obviously the worries that will be about, um, you know, uh, how, how, you know, is it a shallow recession? Is it a more hard, uh, you know, kind of deep rooted recession? And that's what will really the markets. And that's where you'll see uh, markets, uh, you know, probably retrace some of the gains we've seen over the summer. Okay. And if you were to just extrapolate this, um, uh, Andrew, uh, can you portray the best and worst case scenario looking out about three quarters? Uh, for the if I if I was to take that as uh, the, the negative first, which would be uh, obviously you know the expectation that recession is going to happen rather than this Goldilocks scenario, then you could see you know global markets falling five to ten percent from where we are today, uh, just on that basis. Um, if it's uh, and then India would probably fall around half of that kind of uh, uh, you know in, in, in terms of uh, our kind of markets fall, um, but thereafter going into you know 2024, you know everyone's going to look for growth and India is going to be one of those uh, you know those countries which will will, will continue to shine um, in, in that respect. But the very short term, the headwinds are a global a global fall. Obviously, our inflation, as you mentioned at the very beginning, has started to pick up. Monsoons are below expectations, and of course, there's still El Nino to, to face uh, over the next month or so. So, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of things to take the shine up India, which became very overboard. Uh, but it's not a necessarily kind of a, a big fall in our markets um, in, in, in terms of what we'll see globally. Sure. Um, so, can we stay on that point on inflation a bit? How big a, big a worry is inflation uh, in India to you now? And also, what are your takeaways from the Q1 results so far? Because it looks like, I mean, if you strip off financials and if you strip off uh, commodities, it looks like the top line growth has not been very impressive. In fact, it has been tepid about 3 to 5 percent. So, what is your overall takeaway in terms of what it tells us about the domestic growth story? So the domestic growth story, you know, we felt was uh, will continue to kind of pick up in the second half of the year, um, mainly because of the, you know, the kind of capex spending by the government and private companies. It will have that multiplier effect on the economy going forward. So we think earnings will probably start to be upgraded towards the back end of the calendar year uh, into 2024. So that's the good news in terms of valuations, which is why I'm, I'm a little less worried about valuations going forward. Um, in, in, in that respect. In terms of inflation, obviously, uh, a lot of it's to do with food. Um, uh, you know, the government's taking its own actions on that. Um, I, I think that the fear would be this, would be if China does a big stimulus and that pushes up commodity prices uh, further from where we are today. We see, we're seeing oil at, uh, you know, $85 um, dollars a barrel, which is, uh, you know, higher than I think most people's expectations at the moment because of what OPEC is doing. Um, and that will just keep, um, 
you know, that kind of extra kind of uh, caution for, for, for investors if there's a risk on trade, risk off trade uh, happening. Uh, because that would be, you know, inflation is just going to be stickier and therefore the RBI will have you know, less room uh, to reduce rates as quickly as we were expecting um, than, uh, you, know, uh, it, you know, say a few, a few months ago, in fact. Okay. So um, uh, what you said earlier, Andrew, uh, do you believe that in the second half of this year, uh, corporate India or the top 100 companies or the listed space uh, in terms of financials and growth will look much better than what we have done in the first quarter. It sh we shouldn't be extrapolating uh, what we saw in the first quarter. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the first quarter was actually okay. There was, you know, obviously those sectors which, um, you know, did badly and we know them all, which is IT. And that will continue to be a, a, probably a drag on earnings in, in the next quarter as well. But thereafter, as I said, I think you're going to get this multiplier effect across different industries um, because of the capex cycle, um, both uh, by the government and and by private companies, and, and that will uh, boost your kind of margins. Uh, it will boost your your capacity utilization, which you know has a, an impact all the way through to the bottom line. So that's what we're expecting. So it wasn't a bad uh, a bad uh, first quarter. Second quarter, I think, will be uh, we'll see a few downgrades before we start to see the upgrades. And where do you expect those downgrades in the second quarter, Andrew? Um, you know, if I was to, to say now, I, th I think it's going to continue to be in the metal sector. Um, I think uh, I think the the banking sector might see some uh, uh, some some kind of downgrades because of the the, the kind of uh, uh, the, the real kind of surge towards getting deposits, and that's going to compress NIMS for the banks. So I think there's a few downgrades to come as as the banks get more aggressive. Uh, in terms of uh, getting deposit growth. Um, so that would be the two main areas. Obviously, IT, I think there's still some more downgrades to come. I don't think that's uh, that's a sector that's out of the woods. Um, but against that, you know, you've got other sectors which are going to benefit from lower commodity prices in metals at the moment, um, which would uh, which would help their margins in particular. I think um, the other problem we have is is to think about the rupee uh, where we're obviously importing inflation as well. So that's the other thing to, to, to keep an eye on in the very short term, given what's happening in China and the devaluation of, of their currency or depreciation of their currency rather than devaluation, um, which we've been seeing quite aggressively over the last uh, over the last month, actually. Sure. And with respect to IT, Andrew, uh, what do you see uh, will be an interesting um, point if you were to call the bottom? I mean, uh, is there any indicator or something that you would watch out for to call the bottom in IT? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's it, it's I think it's two two factors here um, at play. One is you know let's just take um, uh, you know if you think valuations are a bit stretched at the moment and you expect another five to ten ten percent. Uh, reduction in earnings, then you could say maybe the, the share price would follow that. Uh, so you could look maybe five to ten percent lower than we are today, um, which would probably, you know, you'd probably be looking at September, October if that was to play out. Um, but if your expectations are that uh, interest rates are going to fall um, in the US going forward, this would be good for obviously technology stocks um, on a longer term basis, and that would probably. Uh, be a tailwind and help drag the the the, 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 the 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 stocks higher in the very short term. So, I would say you know if, if over the next quarter you could probably pick up these stocks um, on the basis that you might see a, a, an earnings downgrade, which will affect the share price. But thereafter, if your if your if your view is like mine that interest rates are going to come come down quickly in the U.S., then um, it's a good sector to be for the longer term. Sure. And um, you talked about uh, CAPEX recovery. Uh, as we head into next year and next year um, uh, we have the general elections, do you see any kind of acceleration in investment spending? And um, how does government spending really happen closer to elections in the you know last two quarters? I mean, the last quarter of this year and last quarter of next year. And how do you see the impact of some of those things uh, play out in the stock markets? See, unless it's uh, you know kind of more giveaways, then you know if it, if it's more to do with capex, let's just say giving out more contracts for roads, bridges, etc., 
then you know that doesn't have an impact on the economy at all for for you know two to three years. First of all, you've got to award that contract, and then secondly, um, it would have to be built, um, and that doesn't happen overnight. So um, I, I don't look at uh, I I don't think that's a factor I'd be looking at in terms of uh, stimulating the economy um, between now and and and, and uh, when the elections are next year and possibly May. So I don't I don't see that as I, I see the government continuing its capex uh, program. I don't see it being uh, anything different than we have today. Sure, but those uh, you know the order flow also is an important trigger for stocks to perform or not perform, isn't it? So I'm saying in that context, uh, do you see some kind of acceleration in momentum in some of these counters or is, is that something that is already factored in? I, I think that might be factored in. I think, I think when I look at CapEx and, and uh, you know, we can look at the kind of think about the traditional roads, bridges, uh, et cetera. But I, I think it's more of the smart offices, smart manufacturing facilities. It plays into a different kind of CapEx cycle. It, it's more geared towards those you know, Siemens ABBs of this world, uh, rather than your kind of LNTs and your and your BHLs, which is more kind of uh, infra uh, um, in in terms of uh, orders. So, but you're right. I mean, obviously, orders uh, obviously have a, an impact on share prices. So, uh, but I don't think it's necessarily. I would see an acceleration of orders given um, to um, you know to help the economy. It might well be just in the normal course of uh, of, of awarding contracts that. Uh, it happens over the next six to nine months. Sure. And for you, what are the top plays uh, when you play the investment cycle or the CAPEX recovery? Is it uh, stocks that you mentioned like the ABB and Siemens? Uh, uh, do the high valuations there, at least they seem high right now if you just look at the PE numbers. Um, uh, do, do Are you convinced that the growth trajectory will sort of uh, uh, justify those numbers. So yeah, I think um, I think there's two points to that. One is, um, you know, if I, if I look through the the, the cycle uh, over, you know, the last twenty years or so, is, is, is share prices do move on on uh, on the contracts being awarded. So we we know that the the government and private companies are going to be awarding more and more contracts, and if foreign uh, direct investment comes into the areas which we've, uh, we 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 know about. Um, then obviously you're going to see uh, you know the, the, the order intake uh, can continue to grow. Um, what I've always found a problem um, has been the execution side of these contracts. Um, so I think um, I'd rather follow the the, 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 the the cycle on the contract being awarded rather than uh, the execution and therefore the earnings. So I still think we have some more time to run in this sector uh, because it's a, obviously a you know a, a very big capex cycle uh, by the government but also i expect by companies uh, as they look to to, to india um, to, to move away from china but also on the kind of you know many possibilities of, of growth within india and then exporting from india as well so that's going to keep the capex cycle you know buoyant for the next two to three years at least sure so if we just look at you know a three to five year cycle andrew what would be a realistic expectation in terms of returns on all these cap capex plays? See, so, yeah, I think you, you know you have to kind of look across different uh, themes. I mean, capex is one of them, right? Uh, but you could also look at the you know the, the, the kind of capex that's going to happen within certain sectors. So, defence, renewables. Uh, you're going to see capex there, which will obviously have a, a direct impact on earnings as well. So. And not just you know, focus so so closely on on what the government or private companies are spending, which is important. Um, but I think uh, you've got to look across other themes that play into that capex cycle um, as well, which will, will help uh, you know the earnings of those companies going forward. Sure. Uh, so the big news, uh, uh, Andrew, today was uh, Geo Financials listing. Uh, what is your take on Geo Financial and how does it alter the non-bank financial space? Well, you, you know, obviously it's it's, uh, it's difficult to say right now because, you know, it's uh, they still have to start some of those businesses. Um, so I'd like to see more details first before really kind of commenting because it would be unfair to say uh, anything on, on the basis of, uh, of, of uh, you know, very little information to go on. 
Um, I suppose what the market's thinking about, though, is, uh, and the brokers' reports have seen, is more about uh, where the disruption could happen, which asset classes, oh, sorry, not, well, not asset classes, but which uh, sectors or subsectors within the financial industry where uh, GEO might be heading uh, could be disrupted going forward. So, as I said, uh, until we see that clear plan, um, then it's difficult to kind of comment either on you know, what they're going to be doing or how that will impact uh, the industry overall. But, um, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. So unless you make a big acquisition um, or, or something like that, then, you know, growing organically does take time. Sure. Andrew, you said earlier that, you know, uh, there might be a few downgrades in the banking sector because of, uh, you know, margin compression and stuff like that. Uh, you being an absolute return uh, investor in your current avatar, uh, uh, how do you play this whole BFSI space because it has a large weight in the index but as an individual investor or an absolute return chaser you don't really need to pay attention to that uh, is there are there absolute absolute return bets in the non-bank financial uh, space that you fancy no, so what we have to look for both is, banking is, and is, non-banks uh, and of course yeah. the entire financial services sector including insurance asset management whatever yeah, that's a that's a, a big scope to go with. Um, but uh, see, asset management is very easy because we know that savings is going to continue. Um, now it's rather you know um, there's going to be more disruption in the in the industry either through regulation uh, or through new entrants. So so that's uh, that's going to you know play in the minds of investors in the very short term. I think with the banks and the non-bank financial companies, I think there's there's two schools of thought here. Uh, one is obviously a lower interest rate environment probably favours <clears throat> the non-bank financial companies in the shorter term. That seems to have kind of drifted out now, right, because of what we talked about earlier in terms of the Fed uh, and, and higher for longer, possibly. Um, and uh, with the banks, obviously, there's, um, you know, the, the squeeze on margins, which we've talked about. So there's no, to my mind, there's no real catalyst at this moment. Um, to be in the uh, in, in to be in the short term, uh, looking for quick returns from the banking and financial sector. Um, I think there's enough pressures there at the moment just to keep it where it is. Um, and and if 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 I'm correct uh, in expecting that um, interest rates will fall in the U.S., that's probably the time to be getting. That's the catalyst for these banking uh, for the financial names to start moving again. Uh, but it's not now. There's too many moving parts um, regards what's happening globally. And obviously, uh, what we talked about again was that the inflation here is probably not lending itself to, to the RBI moving so quickly um, as perhaps we, we may have thought, uh, you know, a month or so. Understood. And any pockets of value you see? So we you know we're playing the themes. We like the themes that uh, are, are, are underlying. You know, we think the growth in India. Um, so, so there's two. Uh, so I've mentioned uh, defence and renewables. Yes. That's a globe, a global as well as India factor, and that's not going to go away from us uh, for many years. Um, you know, we've mentioned the capex cycle. Um, so that's one that's going to continue for, for, for a good number of years in terms of order wins. Um, I think that the, the, the other two or three um, continue to be one, um, the kind of services sector. When I think about services sector, I'm thinking about you know hotels, airlines. I think that's going to continue to see um, domestic spending continuing. And I think uh, going forward, we'll see a lot more um, foreign uh, travelers coming back into India as well. So I think that's one, one thing I would uh, continue to see uh, good growth in, in that sector. Um, the other two uh, are, are kind of a little bit more new. One is the, um, you know, the premiumization in, in, in the uh, alcohol and non-alcohol beverage area, which I think is just starting. I think we're at the very beginning of this runway. So I think there's going to be a lot more kind of growth for these companies um, going forward. So I think uh, the beverage companies is something I'd be looking at very closely. Um, and, and the final one is electronics industry. Um, difficult to, to find the right names because, you know, they're all kind of uh, small companies at the moment. Um, but um, it's going to be a huge industry, both domestically and, uh, and for export. So, again, at the very, very beginning of the runway here and, um, you know, very exciting area to, to, to be in. I think we're going to see 
a few listed, uh, a few uh, new companies be listed uh, over the over the coming uh, quarters as well. So that would give us a bit more choice. Sure. And uh, uh, what are some of the pockets where you see some kind of froth uh, in the markets, Andrew? Well, I think the index itself kind of got overbought. Um, and, you know, it's always, um, it's always, you know, finding what's the catalyst, you know, to bring the market down. Uh, you know, perhaps it was the, you know, the, uh, uh, the results of emphasis, which initially helped. Um, and then obviously the, the kind of turnaround of, of what the Fed was saying and China woes, uh, which just, you know, took the, the, the kind of shine off, uh, off the markets in the short term. I still think the vulnerability is, is going to be in metals. I still think that that's going to be, uh, a, a, um, a sector which is going to, you know, face uh, declining prices. You know, even if the the, the China does um, uh, does a stimulus, I think the demand side of China will just uh, continue to slow. Um, so they'll only arrest us, the slow down, not that not the the, the pace of it um, in 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 the short term. So I think uh, that's a sector which I would be uh, I would be uh, you know quite nervous about in 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 the next uh, in the next quarter. Anything apart from metals? Um, no, I, I, you know, I'm not overly <laughs> negative on, on, on India from a valuation standpoint. I mean, obviously, you can always, you know, find uh, uh, within within the sector the kind of you know, relative valuations. If I was to look at, say, the auto sector, for example, I'm probably less um, bullish on the kind of um, four wheelers and. Uh, and, and two wheelers, and probably more to you know, play play it through the uh, auto component se segment, um, you know, which will continue to see good growth, uh, rather than the kind of huge competition you're going to see uh, through electric vehicles and so on. And I don't, I'm not sure who's going to be the winner yet, as 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 uh, as, as as most people don't. So, uh, play it through components; they will be the winners in the short term, anyway. Sure. And, uh, you know, if you just look at it market cap wise, this time around, obviously, small mid caps have had a great run, especially small caps. Um, does uh, does this space excite you? Do you see uh, do you see them as actually outperforming the large cap years over the next three to five years or have they run ahead of their own growth? Yeah, it's a very difficult, uh, it's a great question, but it's a def very difficult one to answer because obviously, you know, you can take in the small cap sector as a whole um, is, is always fraught with danger because, you know, you're going to have those companies which are going to have uh, very good governance and those which are not. Um, and avoiding those which have uh, good, gov uh, uh, not bad governance would be, you know, would be the, the call of the day. So therefore, I think you just have to be very selective in, in, in what you're buying. And as I said, you know, so if you take the electronics industry, for example, you know, you do see that there's quite a number of companies there, which are you know, kind of, I would say, small to mid cap. Now, the question is, you know, can they become large cap um, in, in the future? And that, that's the question. Do they have the management, the, the, the governance, uh, the right board, the right kind of um, uh, products? Um, that's the way I would look at it. I mean, it's it's uh, it's too broad brush to say you know small caps will continue to outperform because I think once um, you know once we see any kind of uh, uh, downturn um, you know to to you know the markets or risk off trade, I would suspect that it's going to be the smaller mid caps which would uh, suffer some pain um, a lot more than large caps. So you always go through these cycles. It's fine, um, but I, I always worry a little bit when. Uh, everyone wants to buy small caps and no one wants to buy large caps. Sure. Yeah. And uh, uh, your final take on the new tech sector, essentially all these Zomatos, PB Fintech, Nika of the world, that also seems like a mixed bag because the trajectory has, you know, the, of, of Nika, for example, is very different from Zomato. The way companies are looking at growth versus profitability is also very different strategically. What's your take? Yeah, no. So I think the market um, has has probably um, taken the more negative side of, uh, of of the arguments for these companies. Um, you know, I think they've all, you know, without going into individually each of them, you know, it's been either they have to move towards profitability or cash flow positive, uh, which most of them have done. Um, and then, of course, you know, you talk about the kind of competition coming in, 
uh, how disruptive that's going to be. And then you say, well, there's enough room for all of these players anyway. So why why worry so much? But I think that's where the market is. It, it's, it's, it's not understanding, uh, maybe seeing the bigger picture two to three years out. I remember that exactly, you know, for if you go back over the years for, for, for the, you know, kind of um, uh, Amazons of this world. I mean, you know, you, you didn't think it would be this big, right? Uh, and same for Apple. And, and I think that's the kind of vision you have to have. Um, so if you feel that the right, the management's there, they're moving towards profitability or cash flow positive, that's got to be the good news. Um, you know, we're not living in, as we were maybe a year ago, where profitability didn't matter. I'm not saying for these companies, but certainly in the private equity world, um, and, and valuations were, were sky high. I think that's uh, I think that's been rubbed off too hard on the listed companies, to be honest. And I think there's some value there now. So is that the space you're most bullish on right now? I I think it's not the the space I'm most bullish on. I'm I'm more bullish on 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 the two themes of electronics and and, and beverages. To be honest, I think there's I can see the um, I, I I can actually see the kind of margin improvements uh, going forward for, for for each of these companies. Whereas you know with it with the new tech companies, yes, they're in a great growth phase. Uh, but there will be, um, you know, competition coming in. But I think valuations are, are, are reasonable now uh, to start to, to start, to, you know, putting some some more money towards this sector. But uh, not the most bullish uh, of of uh, of the three sectors that I mentioned. But uh, certainly in the third place. So 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 that's the uh, so number one is defense, second is renewables, and third is new tech. Is that correct? No, sorry, it would be, uh, so uh, defense and renewables anyway would be, you know, uh, in, the same category. Of your in, the, it's in the same category, uh, along with CapEx, you know, that's, a, a, you know, that's a global factor, right. and particularly in India is going to play out well. But of the of the new areas, um, I would say that, you know, beverage, uh, electronics, and then new tech would be would be the three new themes I would want to play. Sure. Thank you so much, Andrew. It was lovely talking to you as usual. Thank you so much. Thank you again for the opportunity.